The Rocket League meta is constantly moving forward, and that's never put on display more than at a major. And there was a major this last weekend in Copenhagen, bringing all the best teams from across the world to play in the RLCS. And there's a lot of examples of that meta moving. So today we're going to go over a few of the plays that I think are a great example of ways that Rocket League has evolved, and not necessarily all the clippiest clips from the whole event. That being said, this one is probably the clippiest clip, but we're not going to get to it yet. Instead, let's roll back to Rawas. This is Rawas POV against KC in the 1-0 round in the Swiss. The Falcons are a team that people have been really excited to see how they'll match up across regions. Now, KC going into this event and definitely going into this game is considered the best team in the world honestly by a little margin too you know it's not like even really up for debate coming into this tournament and the falcons who are clearly the best team in mina have a chance to show what they can do and we're going to hop into ruas pov for this goal which will be coming up here in a few moments but i wanted to talk a little bit about this falcons team and about who was playing the best and i actually think that ruas at the end of the day was playing best there's a lot of talk about TRK, Kiliers, Ruas, which one of these players would come out and perform best for their squad? I think all three of them had an amazing event, and it's one of the reasons why this team is regarded so highly. I don't think you can get away with having just one or two players on your team. And I think that they also have very set roles, especially the two twins. There's no doubt that Kiliers is probably the best or one of the best strikers in the world right now. If the ball is put out somewhere in the attacking half and someone needs to finish it, if I'm, if I'm picking anybody on the Falcons team, I'm definitely picking Killiers. But if there's anybody that I would need to make a save in a crucial moment, I am definitely picking Rawas. And it's a good example of the play that comes up, <clears throat> sorry, right here. It actually shows both the way that Casey likes to attack a lot and the way that Rawas likes to defend, which Vatira, air dribble bumping TRK, and Rawas dodging this air dribble bump from Rise, catching the ball with the very little boost he had left, and clearing it out to the midfield as well as winning an additional dunk. And that is the first play I wanted to cover, the air dribble bumps. It's something that you might have thought you were safe from when you were watching ones and switching over to threes. Surely no more air dribble bumps. The cringe must be gone, but you'd be wrong. It's actually something that a lot of good teams were using. And in fact, if you guys watched Rule 1 in the past when it had the twins, it was something they were doing a ton. Kaliers was doing a ton, but they've actually backed off it a bit since. You see Fatira here, air dribble bumping in order to get TRK, and he actually does connect with TRK. TRK gets sent away, and Rise immediately jumps up to do the same thing. Gets around Killiers, so they're definitely in a bit of trouble if Rawas is not able to dodge it, but Rawas holds off on the boost, reboosts again in order to dodge him, pins the ball to the back wall, and then carries it away. This was just an amazing defensive play, and I feel like not often do defensive plays get covered in videos like this, so I wanted to make sure we gave Rawas his shout here on defense. Plus, you'll see that these KC versus Falcon matches are going to show up a lot. I, we talked about on the watch parties that these are basically grand finals, and there's a reason why. They had some amazing, amazing plays, and here's it again before we move on to the next one. Rawas pulling off on the boost, landing on the back wall, getting a clean touch, and clearing it out to show his defensive prowess. Now, we move to another game between KC and the Falcons. We are going to jump onto Rise POV in Game 7 of KC versus the Falcons. This was the last match that they played on the quarterfinal day that Saturday for the RLCS because they knew that these two teams were some of the strongest teams and likely to give the best show, and that is exactly what they did as they went to Game 7 between these two amazing squads. Now, at the time of watching, I said that the winner of this match would just be the winner of the tournament. Like, I thought for sure that would be the case. It didn't end up working out that way, but I do think these guys played to a level that basically has them at two and three right behind the winners, which of course, if you didn't already know, was Gentlemates. So we're specifically gonna watch from Rise POV because he is the king of clutch. It's game seven. And if there's anybody who's gonna get it done, it is Rise, him and Atto have been the attacking duo here for this KC squad over the course of the whole weekend. And Rise often doing it on low boost and not necessarily, you know, doing it as spectacularly as Atto. But in this case, he did. Here is a nice double, but you might be wondering, is that the goal you're talking about? I mean, I've seen a double before, and the answer is no. It's actually this goal that shows up right here. This kickoff play between KC and the Falcons, I think, is a great example of of the meta that has been pushing forward, I think a lot of you guys have probably seen kickoffs like this already, but KC is one of the biggest teams that do this. I actually think Falcons is another one of the teams that do a great job, 
but man, is it not ever more rewarding than what KC was able to get here in a super crucial game seven. Rise hits a double and is ordered to put them up 1-0, and then they, they kind of secure the game here. It goes on a lot. There's a lot more goals that get scored, but I feel like going out to a 2-0 lead this freely is probably the reason why they ended up winning the game. And how it works, as I'm sure you can see here in slow motion, is Rise approaches the kickoff. Vatira cheats up as well. Rise is trying to push this kickoff to the right to get it around Killiers or whoever is that attacking player, and then Vatira will just guide it on target and help pinch it in for a direct goal. That's exactly what they did. And there's a ton of different kickoff plays. I know that a lot of times the Falcons will run a similar one where they'll send both players, instead of trying to go for the insta-pinch like KC is doing right here, they do the same thing but with a you know wider cheat and they just try and win the ball towards that direction. I think from Kilir's POV, he might be able to stop this. And this is going to become a meta battle, you know, back and forth over all the best teams. If... Killiers sees Vatira has come to the kickoff, which, you know, is something that he probably should be watching for in a crucial game seven after they just got scored on. Maybe he's not thinking it all the way through, but it's something they'll definitely lab. If you see both players flipping, you do not want to hit it towards Vatira. You want to do anything to get it towards Rise. I mean, it's just tough either way. You probably just want to kill it. You probably want to side flip. I'm thinking right here is, is you'd want to side flip instead of trying to, uh, you know, push it one way or the other, just jump up and side flip. Maybe you get your best widest car position or... Maybe you just miss it at all because it kind of requires you to touch the ball. And uh, I'm not sure it would go as cleanly. I'm not sure what the answer is. Uh, you know, I think I think it might be a side flip there or just at least Kalir is trying to push it off to the right. Um, because naturally, the way teams are going to run it, they're going to try and send the, uh, you know, the player that isn't mirrored on the kickoff out wide to take the shot. But you'll see a ton of these. And there's not just, you know, this example. There's a lot of different examples. This was probably the biggest example, I think in a game seven between teams that were very likely to go on and win the tournament and uh, connecting this really quick goal. Nothing Rawas can do about it. I mean, I don't know if Rawas flipped back or not, but it really doesn't matter because this was so fast. I mean, he turned up field. I don't think it matters. Uh, even if he turned back, maybe if he turned back, maybe if he turned back, you know, you'd have to go see, you'd have to have Rawas lab it out. And that wasn't pinched as perfectly. There's a chance, you know, Rawas maybe needs to be a little bit more defensive, but still, you know, it's not often you see a kickoff goal to go directly in the net. So that was one of the main things I wanted to point out from the weekend. We'll move on to the third thing, which is also the Falcons versus KC. Now, before we get to the Falcons KC version of this, because every good play has happened in the Falcons and KC matchup, we're actually going to go to the Falcons versus Vitality. It's Zen, Rodosin, and Alpha 54 who are on the verge of going up 2-1 against the Falcons in the third round of the Swiss. Or sorry, the fourth round of the Swiss, the 2-1 the round where the player who wins or the team who wins gets to advance and one of these two teams has to go to the final round, which feels insane to do. And you definitely don't want to be down 2-1 against the Kings. So luckily, TRK hit this shot. Oh, wait, I was lying. It was Killiers. <laughs> this is the way they showed it on the main broadcast too in the top 10 because it's very convincing. TRK up to finish, but has the wherewithal to leave it for Killiers. I mean, making that shot from that high up was always going to be tough. Killiers is available. So TRK fakes and great placement from Killiers. Now, the Falcons used this in order to send it to overtime, and they did eventually win this game. And they won the next game as well in order to advance 3-1 through the Swiss and send Vitality to the final round. But it came back to bite them future in the tournament. That's right, it happened almost mirrored against the Falcons. We are watching Batira POV in game number two in the quarterfinals of what we called on our watch party the Grand Finals because it was an insane series between these two. But KC is actually up 1-0, looking to try and push it to up 2-0. But nobody's been able to score so far on Forbidden Temple. And they just might be able to change that late in this match. Rise a little double. Batira thinks about jumping but ends up saving some boost and rotating back and off of a couple pads rise will lob the ball up 21 boost Fatira though never planned on actually taking the shot he didn't have enough boost to make this play although it may have seemed like he did instead he pulls off the ball and fakes it and allows Atto to boom it home as we watched again from Atto POV he is fully aware Fatira is faking he's able to slot it top right you can even watch from Killiris POV it's clear what he's trying to do on this challenge as he sees Vatira in the air, he goes just a little bit higher so that he can dunk the ball off the top of his touch and guarantee that the clear is sent 
far away from the net so they're actually safe. You wouldn't want, you know, a 50 that drops straight down and gives them still a chance. So that's what Kilirs is trying to get here, but it's a fake, and the ball falls for Atto, and he slots it top right. So the aerial fakes was one of the big things I wanted to point out, and it happened both for and against the Falcons. Next up, we have something that anybody who was at the watch party knows that we said a few times, but the ceiling is the new backboard. The Rocket League meta has moved to the point where the backboard is as important to defend as the goal. So defenders have slowly started defending the backboard just as much, and it hasn't been possible to hit double taps. So instead, players have been going to the ceiling. And here's a few different examples. This first one is from Scrub, playing against Elevate, but we got a couple more. We're on Atto POV as KC play against Gen G, and for some reason, Atto tries to see how many doubles he can get off of this corner, but I think Atto's going to find himself in multiple places in this coverage because he is pushing the metaphor like crazy, and here he gets a nice double off the ceiling and back into himself. He actually gets bumped to go back and look at it real quick by Chronic here, high in the air, and yet still manages to make it work. We slow it down here at 25%. You see, actually, maybe he bumps Chronic is a better way to put it. And Chronic goes into the ceiling, and Atto finishes top right over the top of Jack. Jack goes desperately flying by Atto. I mean, the, the fact that he had the car control in order to get that read and double this in is ridiculous, but that is Atto. But we have one more ceiling is the backboard moment that I wanted to cover. Now we hop on to Daniel POV playing alongside G2 in the grand final. And we haven't talked too much about G2, but I would like to say that they have brought the Hopium back. Peace Mode, Atomic, and Daniel are the trio that we hoped for and have definitely given us all hope in terms of feeling like NA can compete again. They show that when they create a super team, they can, and Daniel actually played really well. You know, a lot of people have talked about Beast Mode for G2 being their best player, and actually I think he probably was his best player over the course of the weekend, but at times people feel like Daniel has maybe become invisible or maybe not had as much impact on the games, uh, you know, in his team's previous and these big moments, but I would say he definitely rose to the occasion here. Daniel had a great final day as well. Um, you know, it was Atomic. It was really everybody that got involved. Atomic had a couple great games as well. But Beast Mode was their star. Daniel played great. And I, I really wanted to point out Beast Mode. The fact that Beast Mode is not being brought up in this ceiling is the backboard thing is actually kind of criminal as Daniel shows off his ceiling is the backboard moment as he gets the second goal for his squad in this game. But Beast Mode is actually the guy who did this a ton. Beast Mode was farming the ceiling is the backboard type moments. Here it actually almost looks like the backboard maybe would have been available, but Daniel couldn't have gotten there off of the corner setup. So he goes to the ceiling. Now, I think, you know, there was as many moments as you could ever hope for from Beast Mode. Not all of them were goals, but you had people like tweeting out that they could tell Beast Mode was farming these ceiling doubles like they were no big deal. We didn't cover any of them here today. I think he probably at least hit a couple, but I wasn't able to find them. I found these other ones first. But it seems like the meta is moving forward in that way. You know, the backboards have been covered so well that now it's time to use the ceiling. And we saw tons of evidence of that over the course of the weekend. And G2, they had a good event. But it's now the main event, the moment you've been waiting for. Easily the best play that was made all weekend as we head to Casey and Atto. We find ourselves again in Atto POV and again in the match, which we called the Grand Finals. It is the Falcons versus KC. And this is one of the reasons why we thought so highly of both these teams and of this single match, because it had some of the craziest plays you'll ever see. And, you know, meta pushing forward type plays. This might be one of the nuttiest. A pinch, a ground pinch from Atto after a ceiling reset. Basically a double, you could argue, off the ceiling. But it is just a one-touch reset into pinch, and it is the most absurd pinch I think we've seen in RLCS. The perfect placement, the context of the game, his team's life on the line. If he doesn't score this and the Falcons end up winning, then they are eliminated, but Atto doesn't back down. Atto is constantly looking for crazy plays. We'll watch it again here real quick in slow motion, and then we'll look at a couple different POVs from other players. But Killier is up to try and get the ball, not able to beat Atto to it. Nice air roll, first touch reset. You actually see Rise trying to get Rawas out of the net, maybe trying to make him swing wide. And I'm not sure if it mattered or not because that just came off with so much heat. Now, we'll check out. I think it was the Twins that were both in net. We'll go full speed 
and look at what the twins, or no, sorry, it was Kalios in the air. It was Rawas here on the back wall. I mean, what are you supposed to do? He even had the wall dash to get extra speed to try and defend against it. But when Atto pops off, there is no answer. He didn't even really get affected by Rise. He was just prepping for defense. And can you believe he didn't realize there was going to be a full-on pinch? Because he could have boosted earlier. But obviously, he did not know what that end result was going to be. And it's hard to blame him. That is, you know, one of the best, if not the best, goal line defenders in the game. So the fact that it was scored on him as well, I think just goes to show even more. Kalir, is, he was playing that way too comfortably. He thought he was going to be able to get the ball for free. But Atto had other plans. And I mean, this is easily the best goal that was scored over the course of the weekend. And I think it's a sign that, you know, we're going to start seeing pinches a lot more. We've seen ceiling pinches. We haven't really seen ground pinches used too much. But man, is this ridiculous. I think one of the reasons why we don't see ground pinches as much is because it's hard to get to the ground without anybody contesting you. But here, it made sense to shoot it over the top of TRK. And, and to finish off this video, we'll actually watch TRK's perspective as well to see what this looked like from him. He actually tried to pass it up to Killiers here. And his rotation back. Surely he doesn't have to be worried about a boomer of a shot because, I mean, the reality is he probably could have saved this too if he had 20 20 foresight and somehow knew a screaming pinch was about to come off that ground. But it's impossible to predict. So credit to Atto, credit to KC, Rise, Vitira moving the meta forward. Credit to the Falcons who seem to be moving the meta forward. And credit to the Maids who actually don't show up here at all, but maybe goes to show just how good they were at team play, the, the team that ended up winning the event. And I do think that. These two teams could easily be number two and number three. I think what we really need to see in order to know that for sure is we need to see the Falcons against G2. There's going to be a lot of discussion on whether or not the G2 or the Falcons should have that final spot. But I think according to the games they won and lost, you probably do lean Falcons. It's tough because, you know, G2 got second in the event. So you might say, oh, it should be G2. They got second. Uh, the Falcons got tied for fifth. But when you look at KC and how good they are and the fact that that was their opponent, and they almost came away with winning them uh, against them. And they may have gone on to win the event after that. I don't know. It's just so stacked. It really is so stacked. We talked about it before. Top eight, incredibly, incredibly stacked. And they easily handle everyone outside the top eight. Hopefully, we see it again. You know, maybe we'll see some other teams rise to the occasion. But I'm fine with these teams just continuing to battle out and, you know, give us something new to watch. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this kind of video. I like uh, put a little bit of work into it to make sure I found, you know, some good moments. And I think these were pretty much the key highlights from all of the major. If you guys have enjoyed it, we're on a race to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and you guys have actually been supporting a ton recently. So we are ahead. But please, if you want to keep us ahead, subscribe.